Another year, another iPhone. Today, Apple has announced the new iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, the Apple Watch Series 5, and a new iPad. So let's go ahead and cover everything that happened at this event. Gotta say the marketing was on point, very much enjoyed the way that they displayed the renders and their phones in general, beautiful. So starting off with new iPads, Apple has went and replaced their entry-level iPad with a new 10.2 inch iPad. So the screen gets bigger, still has a home button, still has touch ID, just a better value altogether. And Apple is heavily investing in their iPad line. They wanted to reiterate that with iPad OS. iPad OS really has been a transformative experience for old and new iPads alike. I really couldn't imagine using an iPad without it. So this new iPad, of course, replaces the 9.7 inch entry level model, now 10.2 inches. It features an Apple A10 Fusion chip, so you get even more power for the same amount of money. Also notable is the addition of the smart connector. So you're now able to use accessories like the smart keyboard case. It's not a huge upgrade. I mean, it's a 10.2 inch entry level iPad. There's really not much more you can get for a $329 entry price point. It's a fantastic value, even cheaper for students, available on September 30th. So other than that, no new iPad Pros. Those will likely be reserved for the spring event of 2020. Moving on to the Apple Watch Series 5. Like the leak suggested, more of a Series 4.5 as it's not getting new silicon, keeping the Series 4 processor, but there are a few notable changes here. So hardware is slightly different with the addition of an LTPO display, which can vary the refresh rate from one to 60 Hertz. And because of that, a new always on display is now possible. So this display will slightly dim and thus saving battery life. But because of that variable refresh rate display, Apple is able to keep the battery life exactly the same as the Series 4. And it's actually quite clever the way they've adjusted several of the apps to work with this new low light always on mode. Very cool. There's an additional few new sensors inside of the hardware. So it's not exactly the same as a Series 4. You know, you're getting at least a little bit more for your money here. And I do like the way they've adjusted it with the software. It looks very, very cool. A lot of the apps also will work in low power mode here with the always on display. So they'll be able to dim. There's now a compass built into the Apple Watch. Take advantage of it in the map application so whichever way you turn your apple watch will let you know new complications with that apple watch in mind altimeter great stuff also now with a cellular model you can actually call 911 or emergency calling in general from anywhere in the world despite having service or not a very cool safety feature now using 100 percent recycled aluminum and new finishes so new stainless steel colors new titanium colors one in a space gray and just a brushed silver, very cool. And of course, a brilliant ceramic color. Apple's going ham on the finishes this year. You're able to get it in just about any finish that you want. Ceramic, stainless steel, aluminum, special editions, the new Nike editions, very cool. Now, if you have a Series 4, I'm not seeing a huge reason to upgrade here. I mean, it's using the same processor. It's getting a few new exclusive features, but really nothing groundbreaking. No sleep tracking either that we've heard of. I don't know, I, I personally wouldn't upgrade if I didn't have to for my channel. Availability on September 20th, $399 for the GPS model, $499 for cellular, and the Series 3 will continue being sold for $199, like the leak suggested. That means Series 4 is going away, being replaced by this Series 4.5, or 5 as they call it. So moving on to the iPhone. Apple reiterated saying their iPhone XR was the most popular iPhone in the world, or phone in the world, and a 99% customer satisfaction rating. You know, Apple's at this place where they don't really need to innovate anymore. They're doing fairly well, but regardless, they have innovated by innovation only by adding more cameras to the iPhone. Honestly, a little underwhelmed by this year's release, but I was pleasantly surprised by how much better the finishes on their new iPhones look in the actual promos. So the iPhone 11 is what the 10R successor will be called. This is their naming scheme evolved, I guess, and it comes in a few new colors here. It was very interesting to see the design materialized in the flesh, and there were a couple differences from the leaks. The lenses are a little bit more defined. They protrude more than we thought they would. The border's a little bit thicker, but overall, I think it works well. Their marketing, like I said, is on point here, and they make something that doesn't necessarily look very aesthetically pleasing more so. Now, what's interesting is that the actual glass is milled from a single sheet of glass. 
I, that's amazing. I mean, very cool to see the process, how they did it, and it's more seamless that way. Of course, it comes with an additional camera. Apple added the ultra wide camera instead of the rumored just optical zoom camera here. So you're getting the same benefits of the 11 Pro with the 0.5 zoom, allowing you to step back and it remains, of course, at 12 megapixels. The shots were impressive. Like the Galaxy series, this will enable you to join the rest of the world with an ultra wide lens on an iPhone though. And Apple has added some more processing here in the image signal processor, meaning you get even better photos, better dynamic range, just all around the perfect photo without much input from you. And because of that second lens, you're able to take better portrait mode photos. Portrait mode for pets has been added. Just looks great, more value for your money. And there's a new night mode. So Apple has included a new night mode thanks to the new Apple A13 processor that works in overtime to give you the best possible shot in low light environments. They did a little demo of the video, looks great. I also love in particular what they've done with the camera app. They've redesigned it, made it a lot more friendlier. And I'm not sure if you can control the video quality settings, but that would be nice. There's a new feature called Quick Take where you can easily start snapping a video just by holding on the shutter button. This is the highest quality video ever in a smartphone, so Apple says. So they're betting big on the cameras this year with the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, the primary features, primary changes here. So of course the marketing is gonna be surrounding that. Front facing camera gets an upgrade with a 12 megapixel sensor as well, and they've added an additional slow motion setting for the video. Also 4K 30 and 60 is available in the selfie camera now. So all those upgrades were predicted by leaks. And in regards to the Apple A13 processor, they teased it by showing some benchmarks with the Apple A12. The A12 is already far above the competition. The Apple A13 takes it up just that much higher. So the CPU performance is boosted, but it's overshadowed by the GPU performance, which is a much bigger boost over the Apple A12. Happy to see that, that the silicon is still evolving to this day and Apple's leading the race in that one. And the battery life does get better by one hour on this new iPhone 11. So Apple managed to pack in a better camera, slightly better battery life, a better processor, and new finishes in the iPhone 11 and still sell it for less than the 10R, $699. That actually was very, very surprising to me. This is going to be extremely popular going into the year of 2020. It's very apparent why Apple is dividing the two iPhone lines, the iPhone 11 and then the iPhone 11 Pro. They want this thing to be the most popular iPhone, they're pricing it accordingly, and the iPhone 11 Pro goes off into a more expensive territory next year with the 12 Pro series or whatever they call it, because they truly wanna be able to innovate without being held back back by the price points and it's very apparent why the 11 Pro is what it is. And we arrive at the iPhone 11 Pro. We've been talking about this all year. Now that it's out, there were hardly any new surprises and Apple didn't spend as much time on it as I thought they would. There are four new colors, including a midnight green that Max Weinbach predicted long ago. There is a space gray, a silver variant slash white, and a new kind of rose gold color. It looks fantastic. That's probably gonna be my choice, a personal iPhone. And it uses, of course, a new display that was rumored, a 1200 peak nit brightness, spatial audio, so that does get better as Max Weinbach predicted. They're calling the display the Super Retina XDR display. It's using similar calibration technologies that Apple has pioneered with their Pro XDR display for the new Mac Pro. Now moving on to the Apple A13, this time around Apple went into detail with it on the 11 Pro. It's still using a very similar architecture, so a six core processor design. The transistor count was a little underwhelming at 8.5 billion, and that's compared to 10.3 on Huawei's new Kirin 990 CPU, which is using the similar seven nanometer plus process. Although of course transistor count isn't everything, overall you're getting about 20% boost on CPU performance and up to 40% on GPU performance. Now, battery life as a direct result with the changes on the A13 has improved a lot more than I thought. Four more hours on the iPhone 11 Pro and five more on the Pro Max versus the XS and XS Max. And it appears that the camera is the actual justification for the Pro naming. That's the main upgrade of the iPhone 11 Pro with its new 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. So all of the sensors remain at 12 megapixels. Those rumors were wrong. Apple did not expand upon it. And overall, the camera upgrade seems huge. Apple has taken software and hardware and blended them unlike any other manufacturer. Actually, before you even take a photo on the 11 Pro, your iPhone is taking four photos, one during the shutter press and then four after, and it combines those nine images into the final result, meaning you'll get a perfect photo every time. 
They've also touted that you'll have a four times optical zoom range, so not quite the five times we were expecting, but still very, very cool. Also an interesting tidbit is that Apple pairs the cameras together at factory, meaning the moment you switch between one camera, it already has all of the settings for the lights and just the scene settings ready to take the perfect photo no matter which lens it is and how fast you switch. Very cool detail here. So without a doubt, this will be the best and biggest camera upgrade ever on an iPhone. You'll be able to take photos in certain scenes that just weren't possible before on that quality level. I'm in particular very interested to see the dark mode and just how capable that is. Now, Apple didn't go into all of the details, all of the changes of the iPhone. They briefly mentioned them, but I'm sure there's a ton that they're missing out on. Overall, though, the gist of it is new design, new cameras. Well, the new design being the matte and new color is it worthy of an upgrade from the 10s it's a stopgap until the 2020 iPhones but I'm sure it'll still be the best iPhone yet it's got even more power more battery life an upgrade in every sense of the word just not very revolutionary also intriguing to me is that they did indeed boost the water and drop resistance of this new iPhone so it'll be truly the most durable iPhone ever even though the entire back is made of a single piece of glass We'll definitely have to test that one out. So the pricing on the new iPhone 11 Pro series is exactly the same as the 10S series, $999 and then $1,099 for the iPhone 11 Pro. Storage options did not change. So a very disappointing entry level 64 gigabytes, and then 256 and then 512. So that was probably the biggest bummer in terms of leaks that didn't happen for me. And this will be available to pre-order at a different time of 5 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Friday the 13th and then a street date of September 20th. Now the iPhone XR is staying in the line with the iPhone 8 series, which was surprising. And yeah, there it is, the iPhone 11 Pro. Let me know what you guys think down below. Overall, it's the upgrade we knew would happen, but I thought there would be a little bit more and there was no one more thing at this event. So yeah, stay tuned for the full review in person.